In the early embryo, very soon after fertilization, there are stem cells that are able to differentiate or mature into any other tissue in our body. These cells are therefore called pluripotent stem cells. But very quickly thereafter, they become specialized. They can only contribute to the tissue in which they live. These are tissue-specific stem cells. So stem cells in the brain only produce new brain cells, and those in the gut produce gut cells. Almost all our organs contain a small population of these tissue-specific stem cells. In every tissue, many cells die when they reach their normal lifespan or after injury. In some tissues, the lifespan of cells is very long. Cells in the heart, skeletal muscle, brain, and the lens in your eye all live very long. In contrast, in other tissues, the lifespan of cells is very short, such as skin, gut, and blood. In fact, every week, the inner lining of your gut is renewed and every month your skin is replaced completely. This is possible by tissue-specific stem cells, which continuously replace cells that have become lost. One could argue that tissue stem cells are nature's own anti-aging agents. Without these stem cells, many tissues would age prematurely, as no repair could ever happen. However, whereas skin wounds recover very quickly in young infants, as we grow older, healing gets more difficult. Many old people suffer from too few blood cells and become susceptible to infections or anemic. It seems very plausible that at least some aspects of reduced tissue functioning during aging results from a reduced functioning of stem cells. How could stem cells age? As stem cells divide very often during the lifetime of an organism, they need to replicate their DNA and pass this on to their two daughter cells. Damaged DNA is therefore bad for stem cells. Patients that suffer from diseases that result in increased levels of DNA damage typically have problems with regenerating tissues and age prematurely. A special case of DNA damage relates to the ends of chromosomes, also referred to as telomeres. These ends shorten a little bit with every cell division. If the ends become too short, a stem cell cannot properly divide any longer. There may be multiple other reasons why stem cells perform worse with age. One of these appears to relate to the process of epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to the program that dictates which specific components of the DNA are used by a cell. For example, the hemoglobin gene is present in all cells of our body, but it is only used by red blood cells. Similarly, the insulin gene is only used by cells in the pancreas. DNA in a cell is typically very compact, and compact DNA cannot be used. If a cell needs to use a stretch of DNA, for example, to produce hemoglobin or insulin, this part of the DNA needs to open up so that it becomes accessible. Epigenetic enzymes take care of this and locally open up or close stretches of DNA. Epigenic regulation can be compared with the instructions that a software program uses to select which components it needs at a specific time point to execute a certain function. It has become clear that these epigenic instructions are very important for stem cells and for unclear reasons change with age. This may result in some information becoming inaccessible in aged cells. At present, we do not know how to delay aging, but if we would be able to find ways to keep stem cells functioning properly during aging, tissues would remain more healthy.